So welcome to day two then of week 10 and it's Newmarket, Thirsk, Air and Longchamp today with the pre lark the Triumph, obviously the main focus of attention later on at the end of the day. So things get underway then at Newmarket with the Cambridgeshire, one of the big heritage handicaps of the season of course and we've got a massive field for this just like it's supposed to have 30 odd runners usually in this and we've got a really big field as well today they'll probably split into two or maybe even three groups it should be a thrilling race double have um, a lot of fun calling this one and the top rated one right on the top rated as well 110 twinted for Stephen Rand is a group horse in a handicap but he's got to give a lot of weight away and he's got to get through a lot of traffic there's plenty of others in there with lots of good chances as well Wu Chang Gratulator for Vinnie Gerard looks to be pretty good but you go down you go down the car to find something that's got a little bit of a little bit of form a little bit of class of a lightweight and you can't help but being drawn towards Sam Piper for David Robertson or Tina's Villa for Darren Thompson 1976 was a good winner last week as well and there's plenty in there with chances should be an absolute thrilling start to a great day's racing the second race at Newmarket is the silver wedding handicap this is a 0 to 110 as well it's a mile and a half this time and once again Steve Rann is the man who's bringing a group horse into a handicap and he's got hot logic which should be um, should be a pretty warm order for that Hans Jones has got the interesting name Flopalopagus it'll also be in there with a shout and 101 battering for Molly at is never too far away. Carl Arigante has got Kempton, or probably running in the wrong colours, and it seems to be happening to him quite a lot lately due to some sort of mix up. But no matter what colours they run in, as long as they win, he says he doesn't mind as long as they win or colours they've got on at all. So after that, then we'll shoot up north and we'll go to air when we kick off with a 0 to 90 nursery for the two year olds and sunny spot for David Robertson. He's the top one in that, but Gillen for me actually was a good winner last week and quite fancy that one too win again Leif Erickson for Carla Agante will be hoping to turn the tables and crossroads for Sirius Chill he's also in there with a bit of a chance Campbell Handicap is after that that's a one mile five furlong 0 to 90 and David Robertson's class act here is Jane Austen group one for Derek Hinton hasn't quite lived up to its name so far but it'll be hoping to put things right in this one it's a pretty open looking race small field but the top one does look the class horse in the event and we've got the UAE Handicap this is a long distance handicap two miles and one furlong for three year olds and upwards and funky music it's a top rated and this one's been hitting the post and the crossbar many times this season deserves a win and should go close Mr Ed though is also a class act and that one has been running well second last time out and a winner four races ago Constable for Carla Aganta was a winner last time and Portland's for Daniel French and Gold Cup for Derek Hinton have also won recently so this one should be an absolute thriller the final race at air is the William Hill Gold Cup that's a six furlong sprint 0 to 100 and top hat for Django who's fast becoming the king of the sprinters isn't he he'll be hoping to take the prize home to Australia with this one and top hat is rated two pounds superior to the rest of the field the stepsister for Molly at Surfer looks to be his closest danger but Graham Clutterbuck's Jupiter Island and Darren Thompson's Lavadaz shouldn't be too far away either then we'll just nip down the country to Lick and go to Thirsk for the personal touches handicap this is over the slightly strange one mile three for a long distance it's a 0 to 90 and Lady Long David Robertson again got the top one here but Larwood capped off for Dung Warren looks to be in with a bit of a squeak human race for Stu Gray is also in there with a chance and so to talk of the town for Derek Hinton Cassie Alaska of course was the horse that was beaten last week when a jockey dropped her hands and the horse ended up looking like he was going to win by a country mile and ended up third so they'll be hoping to um, get some revenge for that today plenty in there with chances and it looks like it's going to be a pretty good race that one the tote quick pick handicap is the next race at first the final race at first in fact and that's a 0 to 80 over one mile five with Derek Hinton having the top rated night swimming in that one but again that looks to be a wide open race it's a smallish field There's not to be many recent winners in there and anything could take that one after that one we'll be over the sea to France where we'll be enjoying their big festival of racing there for the Arc the Triumph and the first race today is the pre labi the sprint over five furlongs, a heavy ground might cause a few upsets for a few people but Cove Blue for John Morgan is still the best horse in the race, two steps for Steve Rand also looks pretty good as well, Exocet Missile keeps missing the target for Paul Rhodes and Woohoo Blue, Woohoo Bebo even for Vinnie Gerard. he says it's a bit out of its depth but it's, been, it's won a race a couple of races ago so could still be in there with a bit of a chance then we'll go to the pre Jean-Luc Lagardier which is a six furlong race for two year olds uh, see how they get through the heavy going Lafayette for Steve Rand top one here zoom 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 for Joshua Sutherland Volos for Darren Thompson powerful beauty for Molly Surfer Shala for John Morgan and Humongous for Paul Rhodes all look to be there or thereabouts they're all rated within four pounds of each other and it's only lunchbox legend and the lowly rated broken dream that appear to be out of it then we'll see the Phillies over a 
10 furlongs, one more two furlongs, the Prix de l'Opera Longines, and lost at sea is a top, rate this, top, top rated this time, rated at 116, sliced bread for Django, he's also in there with a chance, Wu Chang Gladius for Vinny Gerard, shouldn't be too far away either, and Margaret Court for Paul Rhodes, is also on a bit of a retrieval mission after a couple of disappointing runs, looking down towards the bottom of the ratings on the card, Glue Factory for Joshua Sutherland, he's a quite lowly rated horse from that stable, and we're expecting that one to get into some form before too long. The final race of the day is the Perilla Lot de Triumph, of course, and it's the big, big premier mile and a half race towards the back end of the season. The heavy going, though, could cause some upsets, but it's always a big battle this between the older horses and the three-year-olds, and it looks to be a good mixture this year as well. Not such a big field as normal, though. You don't normally see 20-odd in this, and we've only got about 10 today, so that's a bit of a disappointment, I suppose. Twisted Logic, though, will be a pretty short price favour after winning his second King George, and Steve Rand knows that one's got £6 on the rest of the field, but Paul Rhodes Treaty of Versailles, and he's hoping for a big run from that one. Darren Thompson will be trying to spoil the party with Noise Zone, and you can never rule out John Morgan, can you? Ghost Bay's won its last two races he reckons it's an awful three-year-old and it, it, it would be a better four-year-old and it's been better so far so let's see how he goes with that one master class for joshua sutherland is also a win on this season so is fame seeker for david robertson and you've even got the one down the bottom there richard cheese that was a winner last time out so it should be a thrilling end to day two and i'll pass you over now doug and we get on with the day's racing